And we're back with another uh, tailgate edition of Sunday Scores. Uh, I did not go buy any scores. There were a lot of estate sales. I've heard about some garage sales, lots of bike stuff. Seems like everyone's selling. No one's buying. I'm still trying to clean out some stuff. I'm a little broke. I'm trying not to go crazy. I did sell the Panarello. It took about a week. And I sold to a really nice kid. He drove down from Vancouver, Washington, which is you know about a half hour north from us, across the river, across the across the state lines. And he was telling me he's been volunteering with a new little nonprofit bike shop up there, which is really cool. And I told about the ones down here and told about the salvage sales and stuff to come check out. And he liked the Pinarello. He'd never ridden a fixed gear before, so it's a little oh, it's kind of an advanced bike. Um, but he was really excited. He rode in the parking lot a little bit. And, was into it and I hope he likes it and I'm sure he's going to change everything on it. He seemed like he's that kind of guy. He's learned how to work on bikes, so that's fun. Um, I did get some stuff at Sunday Salvage. I, I went to look for stem for uh, Avery's bike we were fixing and I bought a whole bunch of stems and probably none of them were right, but I couldn't help myself. But I got some other stuff for me. Ugh. I got this brand new Thule Sweden bike rack that says it'll fit any car. I'm sure it kind of looks like it'll fit the back of a station wagon. Um, they had this there for a while. I think it was like 150, then down to like 50, and then marked down to 20, so I finally got it. It's sticking bikes in and out of the back of my wagon. It's kind of annoying when they really can only do one at a time. So I'm trying to put this on today. I bought one frame. It was hanging up on the wall. I never buy mountain bikes, but it was hanging up on the wall. And I could see the XT rear derailleur. And I thought I could see the X on the cranks are great, so I thought it was XT cranks. I asked how much they wanted, he's like, uh, 20 bucks. So I bought it, 20 bucks. I'll get more than that for the rear derailleur. I'll get more, I'll get double that for these cranks. The front derailleur looks good. One of the guys there kind of wants the shock out of it, so I told him he had a seat posted by Keybot that I wanted for that Pinarello, but I still want it. So I told him I traded this frame and shock for that seat post. And he was like, yeah. It's got some Dior 3x9 shifters. It's got some Hayes hydraulic brakes, so See if anyone wants these hydraulic brakes for cheap or free. And I'll keep all this Dior stuff or eBay's it. And then I got this bag of stuff. I did take this Specialized down that I had it for sale for a while. One of the bike farm people said they wanted it. They wanted me to bring it down and they didn't even bother to show up. But to be fair, I think bike farm said they are closed today for a Sunday Parkways event. I usually go to the free box first. There's so much good stuff in there, but I skipped it because I was looking for stems. But in the end, I came to the free box after everyone else went through it. There's a couple things in the bottom. There's some brand new road brake cables, a Nitto bullhorn bar. Maybe everyone thought it was a flop and chop or something, but it's not. It's a nice actual fixie bullhorn. I want it. I got some short Nitto stems. I got some other bikes I want to do fixed gears and stuff with. It says, uh, it says Nitto right on it. Dacus, who wasn't there this week, she just told me at Bikes for Humanity, she went and recycled like every non-ergo bar, including all these old nice silver Nitto bars. It's like, that's crazy. These bars were so popular. All the stuff that says Nitto on it was so popular two years ago, now no one cares. Let's see. I almost bought this inner tube. It was so cool. It was an old pan racer tube. And instead of saying Presta valve, it said French style valve on it. I had four of them. They were uh, 700 by 18 only. They're so old, I don't know if it'd work. I almost bought one for my collection. I'm like, I'm hoarding, I can't just collect stuff. So I didn't get them. Maybe next week. Let's see, I did go to the chain rings and I got some real good scores there. So here's, I think it's this little 110 with four out of the five FSA bolts, 10 speed, medium use, still looks like 90% life. It's a 110.34 in silver, that's a great size. Uh, barely used old 130 uh, SG 53 tooth. This is, it doesn't say, it says 5339, but it doesn't say 9 or 10 speed, so it might be earlier, maybe really early 9 speed or 8 speed stuff. It's in good shape. This is a fun one. So this is a Shimano. It's got a nice little aluminum bash guard. It looks like it's 130. It's a 45 tooth. And the teeth look pretty good, and it has all the hardware and the bash guard and everything. So this is a fun city bikey size with the bash guard. Look at this. This is the third one of these I've scored in the last couple months. Salsa chain guard for 130 BCD by 44 tooth max. It is not scuffy or scraped up. It's a little dirty. 
I sold one of these to a friend for 20 bucks. Sold another one on eBay for 20 and everyone's like, these are worth way more than that. So the person returned it because they got the wrong BCD. I put it up for 40 and it sold like instantly the next day. So I'll put this up for 40 and see. 130 BCD is better because this fits like uh, road cranks like Altegra and stuff like that. And up to a 44 tooth ring, so it's perfect for 38, 9, 42, like all the common sizes. Um, it's a very popular for making your cyclocross bike a one by. The third one of these in mint condition I've gotten there recently. Like, it's awesome. Very cool. If I didn't say salsa, I'd save it for myself for a bike, but it's too valuable. And then this, this looks new old stock. I see no evidence it's ever been used on a bike. It is a 110 by 130, like the double BCD, 38 tooth. So the smallest you can go for a 130 BCD, um, which is just great. It's a little BMX. I almost showed Gary. I was almost like, hey, Gary, here's a BMX thing. And I was like, oh, but it's 38 tooth for 130. Like, I keep ordering these new because I want the smallest teeth I can get on stuff. So maybe I'll save it for a future project or... Maybe on eBay, I have so many rings up on eBay right now. And I slowly but surely sell. Let's see, I did grab a couple of tubes at the tube bin. Not the one I wanted just for, for keeping for myself. Here's an Isla bike tube, 700, 25, 28, the regular Presta valve. Totally usable. Do a lot of 25s and 28s. Here's another 720 to 28 with a slightly longer Presta Velva 40 mil. I think I got like a dozen of these last time, or maybe I found another one behind a bench or something. And here's just like a 27 one and a quarter. I do a lot of that. Schrader Valve, like, you know, I'm paying nothing. I think the tubes are priced $2, but he's just sort of like looking at your pile and just making up estimates now. He's not even waste stuff. He's not going through stuff. He didn't care. So it's a whole lot better than paying eight bucks or 10 bucks. So I did get some stems. For old Avery's bike, I bet none of them are the ones that are going to work, but I couldn't help myself. They're all gloss black. They're all kind of going to work. This is basically the same one I just put on there. I'm sure it's too short. Oh, this one's also one inch instead of inch and an eighth. And that's always fun, and I have to grab them because they're rare and weird. And hard to find when you need one, even though they're really hard to sell. So one inch in black. It's nice because you can put it on level, the road stem. This is the kind of thing we were selling those Northern Lions, those where we did a lot of those in one inch threadless and everyone wanted the stems and started hoarding one inch threadless stems. Here's an inch and eighth. It's uh, the older Dimension logo. It's got tape on the sides, probably hiding the Dimension. It's not very high rise. It's pretty, pretty flat and it's probably not really long enough. I still got it because it's gloss black. This is the first one I got. It's totally ridiculous. It's an old core stem, core light or something. There's stickers that can all come off. Kind of a cool shape. It's gloss black. It's maybe about as long as we want. It's not very positive rise though. A little bit. Core, light, 3D. I don't know. It's not very light. It's only 100. I don't know. Maybe we'll use it. I, I like it. And the last but not least, Bone Traeger, gloss black. Also maybe about 100. It's not super long. He probably wants a 110 or 120. And also not a lot of rise. A little bit of rise. But maybe one of these will be all the right things or better. I don't know. I want to go to Bike Farm, but they're closed for the parkways. I went to my favorite red bin. Gary was making fun of me. He's like, where's your red bin? And you go to red bin because he watches all these videos. I was like, dude, I already hit it. I hit it before anyone else was even looking, man. What did I get out of my red bin? I think I got this brand new Shimano 18 tooth. Uh, single speed cog for putting on a regular cassette hub. This is cool. Hoarding this stuff. I'll put it on eBay for this old, old price tag says $4. But I'm sure that was a discounted price tag. I got another brake cable that I'm not sure is galvanized or stainless. It might be galvanized. Whatever. I got another little package in the bottom of that red bin. There's a couple of ferrules and one little inline barrel adjuster. And of the skewers, and I found this. It was brand new in the bag. Blue anodized Mavic. Old Mavic logo. No idea what it is. It says Mavic on it. I don't know. It could be cool. Maybe some nerd wants this for their, their this era Mavic bike. Mavic. Blue. Brand new in the bag. I started going through the derailleur bin, and as I did, car. Oh, here's also a brand new roll of some housing. 
As I did, Carl ran up and threw some derailers in, and so I snatched them up. It is a, you know, seven-speed era Dior LX rear. It's not very scuffy. The logo looks amazing. It's a little dirty and gross. And the matching front, it's 31.8 clamp. And it definitely has some chain rub on the inside, but really not much. And really not in a way that matters. And the logos are real crisp, too. It's a nice LX matching set of derailers. Not super desirable or valuable, but cool. And I was digging some more and check this bad boy out. So this is, for some reason, in the derailleur bin, I do not know why, a fancy SRAM Red derailleur. It's like the most expensive level. It's like their Dura-Ace or XTR level. It is the lightest derailleur ever. I. It is so light. I wonder if this cage is aluminum dyed to look like it titanium or if this cage is actually titanium. I think usually all their bolts are tie on these, all their pivots are tie. This thing is light and it has like nowhere. I have no idea how it ended up in, in that bin. I find something really nice there once in a while. These things were expensive new. I bet it's still expensive. I bet I'll get some dough for that on the flea bay. And then this has been hanging out like behind the shelf on the back for a week or two I noticed. I finally got down my hands and knees and Reached down there and grabbed it. It's a 35 mil clamp SRAM Rival Road front derailleur in just like dang near excellent condition. Like it's not scuffy at all. There's barely any scuffs down here from shifting. Like the black looks great. It, this looks great for something to fell on the floor and sit there for a couple of weeks. I also found this little Shimano. It looks like a Shimano one, it doesn't say Shimano, so maybe it's not. Um, you know, front brazon derailleur adapter. They all sell that SRAM Red derailleur. <laughs> Looks like 318 to me. People have a hard time finding those, so I do sell them on eBay once in a while. People are always so happy that I have them. I went dug through the hubs, you know, find anything really cool. I found this Richie hub. It's cool, it says Richie. The little dust caps say Richie. So it's more 90s or 2000s. It looks like it's drilled for like um, aero spokes. It looks like maybe aero spokes went in and then we're straight laced. So you can release any way you want. It looks low spoke count. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Twenty hole, bro. Twenty hole. The bearings feel not awesome, but probably just need to be blown out. Some fresh grease. And this is a funny one. There is a set of track wheels and they're like modern, weird, ugly hubs with straight pole spokes and weird axle spacers all over and we were joking around that it looked like it was a um like a road freewheel wheel set and somebody put a bunch of axle spacers in and just threaded a, a fixed cog on because this is threaded on and there's no room for a lock nut and we're like i don't know so we finally decided i'm like well can we just pull it down i'll buy that cog and we pull it down and pull it off just to just to just to see so the dude running the place he uh, pulled it down popped this cog off but no it was a double threaded fixed hub. It was a real fixed hub, but someone did something weird for spacing, and it was tubulars. And... But I ended up buying this. It's a little EuroAsia Imports, half inch by eighth inch, 14 tooth. Very small track hog. It looks like it doesn't have fucking five miles on it. It looks brand new. I got one of these a week or two ago. I put it up for 20 bucks on eBay, and it got off from 18, and I sold it, and it never showed up. Dropped off the post office. They never scanned it received. Never got shipped, never showed up. I finally refunded his money after like a week or two. I'm sure it's just sitting by an counter at the post office somewhere. Wah, wah. So, this is hot, but 14 is too little for me. A little micro drive in the front, maybe do like a 34 in the front, 14 or something funny. But I'll just put it up on the flea bay, but it's cool. And then after we're dinking around a bunch, waiting for him to get out and get this frame down, I dug through the brake pads. There's one brand new set. Carbon specific rim brake Shimano pair. I didn't realize that. Halo performance wheel products. So, carbon specific rim brake pads. I don't know if that means. I think it means they're harder. They dig in better. But that was it. That was quite the score. So, not a ton of stuff, but some cool stuff. These LX cranks on this old Trek frame are like mint. The nine-speed shifters look like they're good. I didn't touch them. They're always good. And uh, the XT rear derailleur. I mean, I paid 20 bucks for this whole frame. Someone else, um, the guy from the BMX Bike Emporium, Jeff, 
he got like a mint condition uh, Bridgestone RB2 frame. 55 centimeter. I measured it. It was my size. It was like a 57 or 8. I to try to buy it off him. 55. He said it's a real, it felt really heavy to him. It felt a little heavy to me. But uh, I told him he didn't get around to building it up because he's got too many projects that I might come buy it anyways. So I basically saved an entire group to put one together on a on the silver one I have. The silver one's kind of so beat and I've gotten nicer projects and I don't know if I'm ever going to actually get around to doing anything with it. Um, it was definitely frontal. So I might be buying that from... There was a... This is going to drive some of you guys crazy. You know Ross mountain bikes, like the East Coast version of Schwinn? They made a chrome mountain bike in the 80s. It was like everyone's too die for. People are still trying to sell them for too much. There was a chromed Ross mountain bike there. And I saw it. I didn't run right up to it. I was like, I don't need a whole other project. I didn't realize it was a chrome one. I just kind of could tell it was an 80s mountain bike and had cool brakes. And... But the other guys in the vintage stuff, he got it. He got a couple of bikes. He got some good scores this week. But... Almost kind of regret not getting this chrome. It was it looked pretty big. It might have been my size. And the chrome was like a little pity, you know, just like a little surface rusty. And it was missing some parts, but it had like the slingshot handlebar. And had lots of cool stuff. I bet that bike would be easy to fix up and be easy to sell. People want them chrome old bikes. But it's Father's Day, and uh, yeah, I get all this stuff together and ready. And then my parents are driving up, and we gotta go to dinner. But thanks for checking out my sweet, ridiculous scores. Bucks for all this stuff. Pretty stoked about this ridiculous uh, bike car rack. So now I can go buy more bikes I don't need and don't have room for. But I guess I, I sold the Pinarello. So I've got two more bikes sitting in the house that are in the way that I need to sell. I still have that little, um, the little old vintage '80s medium low end Raleigh that's in mint condition that I tuned up and put up for sale, and no one cared. But for three ninety nine, like. No one cares. I'm gonna I'm gonna make it like two ninety nine. I'll probably make it one ninety nine. I put brand new tires, tubes, bar tape on it, lubed and tuned, brand new brake pads, like what do you want? And I still have the Trek five twenty that I had some interest in a little while ago, but no one seems to care. It's cool, it's like a five twenty is like a touring bike, but it's way more like gravel geometry than touring geometry. It's like a vintage it's like a modern gravel bike, but like old and cool and lugged. But no one cares. Um I had one kid come test try it and kept trying to lowball me and I said no. He wanted to trade me like some beater low end Trek touring bikes. And I was like, I will, but like not for what you want for them. Like, I don't pay more than a hundred bucks for original bikes because I'm gonna put three hundred dollars into fixing them up and I'm only gonna be able to sell them for like two hundred and ninety-nine bucks. It's like I can't lose mine every bike. And he lost interest. That's probably for the best. He was volunteering at a nonprofit down in Eugene. And I was really telling him, like, you should really get stuff and build it up yourself, man. Learn all that stuff. And everything you mess up is just a learning experience. And you learn how to do it right, and you figure it out, and then you're golden. Don't be scared of bikes. They're most likely not going to knock your front teeth out. If your wheel falls out, break your wrist. I've only fractured a wrist or two. I've only chipped a two. <laughs> I can wreck bikes. It's fine. But anyways, thanks for watching.